we have lakes that catch fire, lakes that foam. It can be very dramatic. But at the same time, it's amazing how many people are able to ignore the issue. And that was actually, I was one of them. You ever throw a rock in and make foam holes? No. Can I? Why would you do that? Whoa. I can remember as long as I've lived in Bangalore, whenever we, dro we drove past Bardur Lake, which is like famously like the stinkiest lake in Bangalore, like we would slam the bus windows closed and be like, everybody hold your nose. But we, but that was it. Like that was our engagement with the problem. And then years later, on a school field trip, I went to the lake and had to interview people who lived there. So like being on the ground next to the water, not in an air-conditioned bus or a car, but like being there and talking to people who had to live with that every day, and seeing like someone literally take a bucket of water from that lake and use it to water tomatoes. That was like this is crazy. And yeah, that was kind of what pushed me to action. When I was doing activism, it was really hard to find information about even something as simple as like what is causing that weird foam on the lake. How are you supposed to make change if you don't know what you're trying to solve? And coming from a science background, I really wanted to understand and make sure that solutions were very targeted and very like scientifically backed and strong. One thing that really struck me when I was talking to students around the world was um, there was such a greater interest, um, mostly in developing countries, around solving environmental issues. And when I came back to find students in the United States, there were f far fewer students who were doing research that would have an intended environmental impact. And I think that that's because um, a lot of these problems are not in people's faces in the United States, and therefore they're not motivated to do something about it. When you start channeling a youth perspective on environmental issues, it's absolutely action-oriented. It's like, this is a problem, we have to do something about it, let's go. Let's find solutions and let's enact them. And I think they're showing leadership skills in this moment in a way that my generation is not. And I think that it's a moment for us to take their lead and, and follow them. Well, the first thing is don't accept it. And I think that's true of a lot of people of our generation, that people, that they're upset and they see that like, this is not something that should be happening. And I'd say, yeah, it, it starts with small steps, but really don't limit how big you can go. So you might start by just like reading articles or participating in your local citizen science challenge, water insights. Uh, <laughs> and, but from there you can join a bigger activism group, you, you know, you can go to school for something environment related, you might even go as far as like running for office or, you know, doing really big things. And I'd say really don't limit yourself because everyone who's making change right now is just a person who decided to care and step up. Mm -hmm.